Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com, the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And I'm jumping on YouTube today for two reasons. The first is to say thank you so much to everyone who liked, shared, and subscribed to my channel after viewing my recent video on hand sanitizers, uh, how to make them if you're having trouble finding some ingredients, and just giving you some tips and tricks on how to do that right. Uh, now, the principal focus of that talk, of course, was this ingredient right here. That's the alcohol, the ethyl alcohol, and getting the concentration right. But there's another ingredient in hand sanitizer. It's listed as an inactive ingredient, but you're gonna find it in just about every commercial hand sanitizer that exists, and that's the glycerin. So I'm gonna to explain to you today why I put a little bit of glycerin into my hand sanitizer and the very important role that it plays in helping that hand sanitizer work correctly. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. The United States Centers for Disease Control recommends that any hand sanitizer product should be at least 60% alcohol by volume to be effective. Now those guidelines for alcohol concentration vary a little bit based on which organization you're listening to and which alcohol is doing the work, ethanol or isopropanol. But in my previous video, I added a few milliliters of glycerin to my alcohol solution, slightly diluting it. Now why would I want to do that? Well, the first reason is that I did the math and I calculated that when 50 milliliters of 75.5% alcohol solution is diluted to 52 milliliters, its alcohol concentration only drops to 72.6%. So in my opinion, adding the glycerin didn't cause a problem. But it did serve a very important purpose. You see, the CDC recommends that for hand sanitizer to be effective, it not only needs to be sufficiently concentrated in alcohol, but it also has to remain on your hands for at least 20 seconds when it's being used. But this creates a bit of a problem. Small alcohols like ethanol have relatively low boiling points, meaning that they evaporate really easily. Ethanol's boiling point, for example, is just 78 degrees centigrade. And this means that pure or nearly pure ethanol will evaporate fairly quickly from your hands when applied, possibly causing you to miss that 20 second window. And glycerin, helps solve this problem. Now, let's consider regular alcohols like ethanol and isopropanol and compare them to the chemical structure of glycerin. Ethanol and isopropanol are alcohols by virtue of a single OH group, what we call a hydroxyl motif, that each one has. But glycerin is not a simple alcohol. Glycerin is what chemists call a sugar alcohol and it has way more hydroxyl groups three per molecule to be exact. So how does more hydroxyl groups make glycerin resistant to evaporation? Well, the answer to this question is hydrogen bonding. You see the hydroxyl groups from different molecules can form an attractive arrangement called a hydrogen bond and glycerin has loads of hydroxyls. This makes glycerin molecules stick to one another really, really well, keeping them in close contact and making it much, much slower to evaporate. In fact, glycerin has a boiling point of about 290 degrees centigrade, more than 200 degrees higher than ethanol's, and it's because of these interactions. Now, when glycerin and ethanol are combined, the same type of hydrogen bonding interactions happen between the glycerin and ethanol, slowing the evaporation of the mixture so it stays on your hands longer. Its ability to slow the evaporation of the ethanol is the real reason why most, if not all, hand sanitizer products will use glycerin. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video.